On Friday, House Republicans rolled out their commitment to America. The effort was led by House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. He joins us now. Mr. Leader, good to see you. Thank you for having me. You bet. A lot of comparisons between your commitment to America and the contract for America in 1994. We covered that extensively with Haley Barber. Obviously, Newt Gingrich has heaped praise on you. You definitely had some distinctions between that in terms of where you held it. Walk me through what you want people to know is different and maybe similar to the contract with America. Well, thank you, Sean. What the commitment to America is, it's a, it's a plan for a new direction. I think elections should have contrast. I think the American public should know exactly when they're going to the polls, what do they want to have for the future. So we talk about an economy that's strong, a nation that's safe, a future built on freedom, and a government that's accountable. And under each of those topics are the different things we'll do. An economy that's strong, make us energy independent, lower the gas price, stop this runaway spending that's causing inflation, bring the supply chain back from China to America. There's a number of pieces of legislation we have to do that and make greater productivity in America to stop the supply chain problem that we have. When you talk about a nation so that's do you safe, think that remember what the Demo yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, sir. Keep going. Well, when you look at a nation that's safe, the Democrats would be de defunding the police, electing these prosecutors who won't uphold the law. First thing we do is secure the border, stop this fentanyl coming in to poison our children. The next thing we do is make sure that we bring 200,000 more police officers to our streets, stop the defunding of the police, and then shine the light on these prosecutors that won't uphold the law. We watch from New York and others that have caused this crime. And then a, free, a future that's built on freedom, we do a parent's bill of rights so you have a say in your kid's education. And one element I think a lot of your viewers are interested in, how do we have get a government that's accountable? How do you rein that in? You first protect your constitutional rights, but now we have oversight. We have every single committee has oversight authority, but we also want to look at one, why did the DOJ go after parents and call them terrorists when they went to school board meetings? Where did the origins of COVID actually begin? What happened in Afghanistan? Why didn't the administration listen to the military experts and not have those 13 more gold star families? That's just the beginning, but rein in what we're finding from the FBI and others that we have a fairness in our legal system again. So it's interesting. I talked to your colleague, Jim Comer, yesterday, who would be the chairman of the House Oversight Committee. He mentioned a lot of the same things. So I guess you guys are doing a good job of staying on the same page. <laughs> but, but the oversight piece, and I know you're absolutely right. I think Newsmax viewers are going to love that. Before I get to one piece of it, I want to ask you about the first part of the commitment. Because you guys, at best, would have a majority in the House, which I think you'll have, and a majority in the Senate, which I think you'll have, how do you get this administration to go along with any of the stuff that you just so they've clearly shown they don't care about securing the southern border. So how do you guys then use the tools that you have to do some of those things? That's a great question. We use every tool possible. If we're able to have the House and the Senate, there's a number of things that we can do. We have the 12 appropriation bills where we could put our riders in. We could use the resources in. You also have the ability for a Congressional Review Act that you can repeal the regulations that the administration does in a certain time frame with a simple 51 votes. We have reconciliation to put bills on the president's desks. But what we're really going to need is you, the viewer. Now, remember why we did this. We rolled this out last Friday in Washington, not Washington, D.C., but Washington County, Pennsylvania, because the commitment to America is about you, the viewer, not about Washington. On our very first day, Sean, you know what we're going to do? We're going to repeal the 87,000 IRS agents that the Democrats have wanted to go to hire, because we should work for you, not just go and go after you. And that's the point we want to make here, a new plan for a new direction. Look, I, I think the, the positive agenda you're laying out, as well as the oversight, is, is going to be music to a lot of people's ears. Um, the one thing that I did ask Jim Comer, and I'll ask you, is obviously the incoming Speaker of the House. There's a lot of folks, in, Nancy Mace was asked this on Meet the Press over the weekend, about whether or not they would go as far as impeachment, whether that's Secretary Mayorkas, President Biden himself. You would be the Speaker of the House, the leader of the party. What is your position on where that stuff should go? Well, it's the same position I had when President Trump was in. You should not use that for political reasons. Now, if anything has been done to reach that level, yes, you would move, we'd move forward with it. But 
What we have is a commitment to America to make our economy strong, our nation safe, our future built on the freedom, and also give a check and balance. So what we're out is to make sure we govern, but we've got to hold this administration also accountable. Um, but what we've watched the Democrats do is make impeachment political. We don't never want to make that political, but if s there's ever a case that it raises that occasion, you'd know why we'd be going about doing it, because that would be the situation. So, so let me just kind of try to pin you down for a second. If Jim Jordan, who would be the incoming Judiciary Committee chairman, thought that he had a case for impeachment on either Biden or Secretary Mayorkas, there would be no stop to him. Is that what I'm hearing you say? No, but you, you would have to reach the threshold. I mean, we, we've just, as Republicans, uh, fought and voted against what we've watched the Democrats do, use politics to just go after and demean the whole process of impeachment. We can hold people accountable, but if anything rises to that occasion, it would be clear and concise, and the American public would see that this we'd make the case before him, before we would do any of that. So, Mr. Leader, I've had Senate candidates on all week, and I, I keep asking them, do you have the money to compete? Because all of the reports show that, that, in most cases, the Senate candidates are lagging behind their Democratic opponents. Where do you put the House in terms of having the funds to compete where they need to compete? Look, we, we can always use more resources because we've got great candidates throughout this nation. If your viewers want to join with us, just go to takethehouse.com. Be a part of this. You've got candidates from Rhode Island to Washington State to Oregon to Texas to Florida. Democrats aren't going to give us the majority. You have to earn it. We've got a plan to actually send a new direction with a commitment to America. We're raising resources now. But you know Nancy Pelosi, she says she's going to keep the majority. She says she's going to pick up seats. She has all the unions providing her the money and Hollywood providing her the money. We've got the ideas, we've got the policies, and we've got the better candidates. We just need as much money. We just need enough to get our message out. True. Uh, I do want to ask you about this. There was a story in the Washington Post about political groups, so-called super PACs, that claim to be affiliated with you that have been weighing in on primaries. Do you have any comment on that story? Well, I know some of the stories. They, they want to rein everything that I do in the process. There are a number of places that um, I weigh in in the primary, but I'm very open and direct when I do that to help the very best candidate get through, but it's not very often. Okay. Mr. Leader, I do want to give you credit. I, I Look, I, I said this to our viewers a few weeks ago. I was at the RNC for six years. I know how difficult it is to herd cats to get people on the same page. You've done that. I know it was a seven-month process of getting these members together. And, and from all aspects of, of conversations that I've had, you've done a fantastic job of including all of the different voices in the party to be part of this commitment to America. And for that alone, I think you get a lot of credit, um, because I think it's very difficult in Washington to get people to agree on anything, never mind a commitment to America. So hats off to you on that. I, I really believe that this sets Republicans on the, the pathway to the majority in November, and, and it does draw a distinction as far as where the Senate is. So congratulations to you and, and House Republicans for laying this vision out uh, for the American people. Well, thank you, Sean, because this is a product of all the members in the conference working for the last year and a half to find the solutions to put this country on a new direction, a new path. And that's exactly what we'll do. We just need all of your viewers to join with us to make it happen. Go to takethehouse.com and let's retire and fire Nancy Pelosi once and for all. All right. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, the architect there of the Commitment for America. Thanks for joining us and laying it all out. Thank you.